a two-hour presentation, <laughs> and, and you will now have the executive summary. Uh, no long interruptions. Thank you for, for hearing me. Um, the main driver of the offshore market is the oil price, no doubt about it. Where has the oil price been? If, if we look at it historically, after 2014, it took some years of beating before really in 2017 and 18, stabilizing a little bit with some seasonal, seasonal uh, movements up and down. This you can see if you look back five years, but also if you look at 2019, expectations are for a similar uh, market development as last year, i.e. a price somewhere between 60 and 70 dollars uh, during the year. What is very interesting is that if you look at futures, you can actually buy uh, a few futures traded five years out lower than if you buy today. Frustrates me a little bit, but it indicates that there are some nervousness in the market. Price is a combination of supply and demand, uh, at least according to our school books. In the oil price, there is also a certain amount of geopolitics. But if you look at, at the, so the demand side, then IEA has tried to forecast demand of energy or energy spread going up to 2040. I think it's very interesting following our conversation today about the environmental situation that coal is still valid in this, uh, in this spread going forward 20 years. A quite significant amount of capacity. For the offshore market, the oil and gas, IEA are forecasting that its demand is still growing until 2020. Gas more than oil. For the investors, the next important driver is the drilling rigs. So the amount, the more rigs that are working, the more vessels will be working. So if we look back the last year, what has the trend been? How has that developed? And, and this includes both the, the vessels, the anchor handles, PSVs, and the drilling rigs. If we focus on the plant side for the, for the drilling rigs, that has gone up with about 10% from last year. Here on year, 10% higher utilization on the rig market. And it is mostly a global thing. And if you ask the rig owners, they're actually saying that year on year, their, their amount of tenders is up 26% compared to last year. That is a significant increase. I would then, on a personal note, also say that I think the quality of the tenders today is higher than it was last year. I think there's more likelihood of the tenders being awarded now. We like Morgan Stanley uh, research for, for looking at the actual drilling rig uh, demand looking forward. They have done a five-year forecast for jackups and floaters, uh, which shows a rather uh, important jump from 18 to 19, and then a gradual increase for the next four years. So no hockey stick, which is the old, old style of, of forecasting. Personally, I do believe in a gradual come back and recovery. So I, I subscribe to these numbers. If we try to put them into the anchor handling top supply vessels and the PSVs, firstly the AASTS. Uh, these three, these three uh, graphs just quickly show what happened after 2014, where deliveries of, of uh, anchor handlers went down dramatically, ordering fairly stopped the last three years, and the <coughs> up significantly compared to what was the, the, uh, the, the tradition. If we look at the asset prices, asset prices also dropped tremendously. And there's a lot of people who have lost uh, fortunes here. We have for new buildings elected to keep it flat for the last couple of years simply because the market is not being tested. On the utilization, we saw utilization come down dramatically from 2014 to to 2017 and actually we had gotten out and has stayed fairly stable for the last year. But uh, we were asked to say a little bit about the future. So crystal ball thinking for the next couple of years, we have taken the, uh, the uh, Morgan Stanley Jacob uh, forecast and then we have taken the current uh, known order book adjusted that for what we think is a valid order book, adjusted for vessels that we think are not coming, and also taking the, the current order book 
and then take investors that are at the time of end of 2019 or end of 2020 in layout for more than three years and without DP and take them out of the commercial equation. And then we actually get a interesting development in the marketplace of somewhere about eight, asking 80% in 2020. In my experience, 80% is where you start to see a rate push upwards. For, for PSVs, more or less the same scenario. There was a bigger overhang of, of order book that had to be delivered after 2014. So we see a, a larger delivery profile there for the last couple of years, and there are still some vessels to be delivered here. Again, we keep the new building the prices flat, simply because they are not being tested. <laughs> the the uh, utilization had the same development, except there has been a small little increase in utilization if we go back year on year from last year. And again, basis of the same principles, with the five-year Morgan Stanley forecast of drilling rigs, the valid order book adjusting for investors that we believe are upcoming, and then taking out the supply side investors that has been laid out for more than three years and do not have dynamic positioning, then it shows also a positive trend, only reaching below 80% at the end of 2020. Now, this is our guesswork. We are risking our neck a little bit about saying, making these corrections. Personally, I believe that a vessel that is more than 30 years old has been laid out for three years and do not have dynamic position. They do not belong in the market anymore. There is no demand for them. So the industry has a task to simply take them to the breakers. I don't know how I'm doing on time, but um, that's a little bit of crystal ball um, focusing on the offshore market. I was asked this morning, uh, by a colleague from DBB and said, so you're optimistic? I said, yes, I am optimistic. I think, I think I will, I will see a stronger market in my time. My young colleagues, they will definitely see a strong market. Thank you.